Sesanovic has joined us, and apparently he was listening the other night, Hud, when I mentioned that he always drops by and brings us gear. So yeah, he was. Got a hat and a new scarf, and so I'm uh, ready to go. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks guys. for dropping thanks by. For me, thanks for having me again. Yeah. Thanks, Seth. So I've been waiting to tell you the story because we always enjoy when you come up, and with four young children, I haven't had a chance to come out and watch you guys play, but, you know, the next person who tells me they didn't have a good time will be the first. I mean... Um, they love the experience at Children's Mercy Park, and I have friends who are season ticket holders. So I went to the last game against Portland, and Santana goes into foul ground and makes a play on Soler. And one year you brought us uh, a jersey or a shirt, right? Is that the correct terminology for? I believe it was a jersey. Uh, yeah. A jersey, okay. Um, and then you brought us a scarf. Yep. So I'm ready to go to my first sporting game. I'm pumped up, and I bring out my scarf, showing my uh, my buddies like, look at me, I got a scarf on. So I'm impressed. I've got the jersey on, too. I mean, I'm ready to go. So I show up, and I realize I'm one of 17,000 people wearing scarves because that's my knowledge of, you know, the proper um, clo clothing when you go to a soccer game. I was really, you know, I was like, Seth Sinovic gave me this jersey and this scarf. Look at me. And, I mean, you talk about blending in with everybody else. That uh, Nobody was impressed that I had a yeah. scarf on. You looked so, the part, though, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I looked like someone who'd been before. So. Absolutely. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys. Thanks for having me. You know, we always talk about in baseball how the off season seems to just fly by, and but it's nothing compared to you guys. I mean, I feel like I was at that Portland game just a few months ago, and you guys are at it again already. Yeah, it was a uh, very quick off season this year. We had uh, an additional competition, uh, the CONCACAF Champions League. Um, which we uh, actually just got eliminated in the semifinals. Um, but yeah, we had that additional competition that started the year even earlier than, than usual, so yeah. Your season is so unique in that, um, unlike other major professional sports, you guys have like little mini seasons inside the bigger seasons, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 interesting and uh, it's not as common in you know in, in American professional sports. But yeah, there's the U.S. Open Cup, which is an additional tournament. There's the Concacaf Champions League that you have to qualify for and be one of the best teams in your league in the uh, North American and uh, Central American and Mexican region of the world. And uh, luckily, we were able to come or uh, we were able to. Uh, qualify for that this this current year and uh, like I said just lost in the semifinals unfortunately but now we're turning our ourselves back towards the uh, the MLS season so now you know HUD was a first round pick in baseball he was also an excellent football player get down There's a line drive to left Thank so you. Dozier's on with two outs but he's told me over the years that his first love was soccer right yeah it was and you know, for young people out there, you really want to develop your athleticism. Speed is one of the things if you're in one of the major sports. And for me, it developed my speed, my, my, my footwork, and my quickness and stuff like that. What would you suggest a young, to a young person that's just starting out and wants to find a sport? Well, I would suggest playing every sport you can possibly play. Okay. Um, that, that's what I did growing up, and that's paid dividends for soccer because I, I feel like I take – Little things from every sport that's uh, that's kind of made me into a well-rounded uh, overall athlete or soccer player. So, uh, but most most importantly, I'd say have fun with what you're doing because that's that's the whole point of sports, in my opinion. I had so much fun at that game, other than the the outcome. But you know, you're so nice to drop by, and especially with your you know hometown connection here. This is your ninth year with sporting, but HUD. He's a bad dude, man. I was like, is that the same guy who comes by the booth? He's got a big smile on his face. So I mean, he's got, when he's on the pitch, he's turned into yeah. A, yeah, a, a guy, a guy who's not real nice. But isn't that the way it goes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my wife jokes about it all the time. I'm, she thinks I'm two completely different people when it comes to <laughs> on the field and off the field. Can, so. you, can you stick around another half minute? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. All right, we're visiting with Seth Sinovic, and his Royals are scoreless in the bottom of the second. No score to the top of the third inning on Sporting Kansas City night, and we're chatting with Seth Sinovic. As Homer Bailey goes back to work after setting down the first six, Kevin Plowecki leads off. And Solaire toward the line and right makes a play, and there is one down. And um, every team, every offseason makes some little tweaks. The Royals are trying to get back to their speed game again. What sporting Kansas City tweaks were made during the offseason? Honestly, we didn't make a, a lot of changes. We had a, we had a few pickups. Um, Kellen Rowe was a big one we had picked up. Uh, Eric Hurtado was another one. But uh, we felt we had a really successful year last year, at least the, the coaches obviously did, and um, brought a lot of the same guys back. So uh, 
you know, lost in the uh, at, in the Portland game in the semifinals and looking to make it one more step this year. What's it like? I've been to your your games before, and and the atmosphere in the crowd is a lot of fun. But when you're on the pitch there and you're playing, it's hard to block out the crowd, isn't it? A little bit. Um, I always say that I'm probably the most nervous person in the stadium uh, leading up to the game. Once the game starts, I kind of, for whatever reason, I'm able to block it out and just kind of, you know, just enjoy the moment and play the game. So uh, the crowd really doesn't get to me. Honestly, the, the better the atmosphere, the more uh, the more adrenaline you get from it. But as far as it, it affecting the play and things like that, I don't, I don't really get affected by that. Yeah, I, I had butterflies bigger and in soccer than I did in any other sport really before the match interesting yeah we, we, we had some state uh, championship games I played when I was at, you know like 16 under and stuff and just sizing up the opponent looking at the opponent and you guys do studying on your on the your opponent so you know who who's the, the, the fastest guys who has the best ball control but you know I always would just eyeball them and look and say, you know what, I'm going to beat you because so much of it was speed and I was a forward, so they would push the ball forward and I was a striker. Loved it, though. So I, I understand where your butterflies are coming from. Sure. Yeah, no, you. I think that's that's something you you obviously prep for the game uh, earlier in the week, but, you know, when your game is about to kick off and you're kind of staring, staring the guy that you're going to be matched up with throughout the game uh, right in the eyes, it, that's one of those, like, I'm going to get you this game. So, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah got to have that mentality. So who was more nervous during the first pitch, you or Matt Beasler? I was a little bit more nervous than him, I think. I was a little – I told him before, I'm like, don't short hop it, don't make me look bad. And I said I, I'd have to, like, take it in the chest like a catcher or something. So do you think but. he did it on purpose? I don't Look know. At that pick, I'm though. pretty impressed like with my pick that's, there, though. That's yeah. a middle infield yeah. pick right there. Look at the hands. Watch it. You stay with it. Go pick it and move it, pick it out of that dirt like that. It's like a first baseman <laughs> yeah. dig. Yeah, I was uh, I was shortstop uh, growing up, actually, so I've uh, probably made a few of those in my day. I right, probably well, missed a lot more, though. I know you want to watch the game, and you want to watch Nate Bucati in the hot dog race tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Apparently, Nate's 2-0 and in the hot dog race, and, and one of the guys he's going up against was a uh, was track and field in college. Ooh. So we'll see how Nate does. But thanks for dropping by. Thanks really for having you. me. Thanks again. for the stuff. Of course. Yeah. Stay healthy, bud. I will. Have a good yeah. season. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. Thanks, Seth.